You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. What's up, everybody? You're watching slash listening to the Command Zone Podcast. I am one of your esteemed hosts today. My name is Jimmy Wong. And I'm the other slightly less esteemed host, Rachel Weeks. <laughs> nah, you're more esteemed. You got a better <laughs> win record on game nights. That's all that matters, turns out. <laughs> so uh, this is a fun episode today. Rachel uh, put together a very lovely outline, as you often do. Um, Thank you. And this is sort of in the realm of some other topics we've had, but now we're going on the more uh, fun, positive route. Yeah. It's, it's how to build a deck that you love to play. As opposed to the cards you hate or whatever else it is. Well, we spend a lot of time talking about how to build a powerful deck or how to build like a synergistic deck. But I, I think it's also something that we, we could talk about is yeah. building a deck that's just fun to play for yourself. Stop. Because like <laughs> like building building decks is one of my favorite things to do. And I still put a deck together that as soon as it's in front of me and I'm playing against people, I'm like, I hate this. Oh, whoops. I did, this is I a did mess. A bad thing. Like this yeah. is not like either it's too powerful or it's not powerful enough or I just personally don't like the play style. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've assembled some stuff that we've learned to hopefully make sure that every deck that you get in front of you on your play mat, you absolutely love to play. Yeah, and it's really important to also order the deck so that you can actually play it. Mm -hmm. And we recommend you head on over to cardkingdom.com slash command because this way, when you order your deck and you've done this episode's research, you know what you're going to get in a single package is your entire deck ready to go and you're going to love to play it because you've obviously followed our advice. And cardkingdom.com slash command does all of that for you. They have a huge inventory. They've got tons of different styles as well as qualities of cards so that if you're looking to build a budget build, you can put all the cards in, it can find them for you and say, you know what, I want near mint on this, but heavily played on this. And you can actually bring that price down, get everything in one package and save some money as well as build the deck that you're trying to play anyway. Anyway, it's Magic the Gathering. Going to get those cards. So support the show while you're doing so at cardkingdom.com slash command. It's so easy. Yeah. And while you're using affiliate links, go to ultrapro.com slash command to pick up all of the accessories that you need to protect this new deck that you absolutely love to play. Get the matching sleeves and a matching deck mm. box, a matching play mat. Make sure you're representing the decks you truly love and that truly represent you. And you can do that at Ultra Pro because they have all of the official magic art so they have your favorite art on on cards mm -hmm. or on the like a lot of the time when the precons come out yeah they'll have matching play mats these are the, they do all the secret is, layer arts as well they do do the secret layer ones as well so make sure that you have signed up for their newsletter because they're always doing drops for yep. secret layer product and that will go quickly so make sure that you have the are on the up and up and you're visiting ultrapro.com slash command frequently it also makes it more fun to play a deck when you have everything all set up for yeah. sure like i have decks where i'm like oh i love this deck because it's i always play this play mat with it mm -hmm. blah 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 uh finally last way to support the show is directly patreon.com slash command zone we love our patrons we talk to them every single day on discord that's right every single level of the patreon gets you discord access and the further up you go you get even more cool stuff like exclusive content everyone else also by the way gets to watch episodes of extra turns and game nights a day early so you get to know what's happening uh, what's on the up and up and watch the again when it comes out the next day but best way to support the show directly is at patreon.com slash command zone and of course we shout out one lucky patron every episode so this week's episode is dedicated to david la you rock david you do rock you rock so much that we're going to dedicate a whole podcast to you yeah all right here we go a building the deck <laughs> you love to play so decks are investments i think that's an important reason why mm -hmm. it's important to uh have a deck you like to play because it's our mental energy mm -hmm. it's the time it takes to build it and of course the money so getting it right is just a goal i think amongst every player whatever that means to you mm -hmm. and wanting to have your commander decks be fun to play is you know a also means it's fun to play against maybe for your opponents maybe that matters to you maybe you just want to inspire the table and do something that makes everyone go holy crap let me take a picture of that card whatever it is though building a deck you want to play is complex and so we're going to talk about a bunch of the different facets of what goes into this decision and also how to make sure that at the end of the day you make a deck that you do love to play so i think we should start off with the obvious question which is what does it mean to build a deck you don't like to play yeah, there's a couple of things that could go wrong when you build a deck that that 
there's a couple of reasons that you could find out that you don't like it. Yeah. The first one is you just didn't, you've never played this archetype before. And now you don't know what you were, got yourself into. Yeah. You built your first storm deck. Oh boy. You built your first, you know, a graveyard or dredge deck. Oh man. I still mess up on dredge. <laughs> They're so complicated. They're very complicated. Right. Uh, decks to pilot. They're very specific strategies. So it, it can be difficult to learn those lines. Yeah. And you can find yourself really overwhelmed by a deck of a new archetype type that you aren't necessarily used to yeah i think a lot of people do this when they watch content so mm-hmm. i'll watch a streamer play a vintage cube and draft storm and the entire time i'm like this is so cool mm-hmm. oh my gosh what did they just do they did what for what oh and they won and then when you go and try and build your blue red mizix of the is magnus deck or whatever it is you are in for a lot of things that you, you have to have like a different like dice to count the red mana uh-huh. and black mana you have float right like there's so many different things that go into storm and it's there's a reason there's a thing called a storm scale. Do you know what the storm scale is? Yeah. Yeah. So Mark Rosewater, I think, is the one that established it, which is like from zero to storm, how likely is something going to get a reprint? And storm is literally at the top of it because it's so complex <laughs> and it takes way too much mental energy. And Very also dangerous. <laughs> doesn't really work great sometimes because yeah. you're just playing by yourself, casting 20 spells to try and do a big effect. So storm is one of those difficult things. Dredge, any of these like, complex mechanics you may see shown on the Pro Tour or in the Commander game online, that makes you go i really want to do it but turns out actually playing the deck is different than watching it and Mm -hmm. sometimes you may be enjoying the player versus the actual play style Mm -hmm. more than that and that kind of gets you into confusing spots yeah i mean and some another thing that can happen with is when you sit down and the deck just doesn't work yeah like you had this great idea and you were like wouldn't it be cool if i get this card together with this card together and then you have them on the table and you're like oh (laughs) it's a (laughs) non-bow this is I misunderstood. <laughs> yeah. Or someone goes, actually, the card doesn't work like that. And yeah. then everyone whips out their phones. <laughs> someone tweets at us, inevitably, maybe gets into our Discord. Yeah, this happens a lot. This happens to me because I put too many sub themes into a deck. Right. When you went like when you added a cart, you're like, oh, I should add support for equipment because I put all these equipment in. Right. And and then I'm doing combat damage, so I also want all these combat damage triggers. <laughs> and so I, I'm attacking and if I if I'm doing all these creatures, I should put more creatures in every time I cast a creature i draw and yeah. now you have an equipment damage creature deck wait that, that sounds like a normal deck. <laughs> just kidding it is true though there it's easy to throw way too many things in because mm-hmm. you do that it's like right you catch an idea off of one card right. that sprints into another and then that sprints into another and then very quickly you're just sub themed out Mm-hmm. And your commander is sitting there going, well, what about me? <laughs> yeah, you draw the equipment cards and you have none of the payoffs. Yeah. Your, cre- your commander isn't doing anything. Uh, so that's definitely a possibility. Um, um, oh, this one's pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Your play group was not pleased or and or neither were you. Yeah. So this, I think, happens to a lot of players where maybe they'll show up with a deck that's a relative 9 out of 10 compared to the play group that's like pre-cons upgraded. And you're, just, sure. you're busting out a mana crypt. You're doing this and that. And yeah. then it quickly becomes a, ah, that wasn't fun. You kind of ran away with it. And did you have fun? And you're, you're looking at it and you're going, I don't think I had that much fun either. Yeah, I mean, Commander's fun when you have a balanced fight, when you have like uh, something that everybody's prepared and brought their decks and their decks are evenly matched because yeah. that's when it feels like you're really playing the same game. If one deck runs away with it, then it, it's terrible for everybody. Or if a deck is, is, is more controlling than you thought it would be. I've oh, definitely yeah. done that. Where I put together a list that I thought was cool and you're like, actually, I can just recur removal over and over and over again. And I hadn't really planned to do that. Didn't that happen for a game night? deck you were looking to build and then you yeah. got there and you're like oh no this is not the kind of car i'm hoping to drive on this episode i was trying to build glissa sunslayer and uh, I, I liked it with sagas i was like you can keep you reusing your sagas that's right you're gonna remove counters with right. glissa yeah but the sagas that are in green and black are often like everybody sacks a creature or everybody discards a card mm. or destroy something or deal yeah. with and it just became this deck that i was like this is so grindy and like it's not going to be very fun for people to watch yeah or play again yeah, that, I think that happened as well with Orvar was a card that I think was mm-hmm. like, hey, let's build around this. And then it very quickly became, no, this is not pleasant. Yeah. Um, like this is a combo card. It's combo and it's really card. hard to play else. too, yeah. right? And you don't want to do something that, you know, it's I, I think it's fun if you're like, I want to learn how to play this commander. And mm-hmm. over time you practice and stuff, but it's similar to Storm where if you show up, and maybe it's like you played a stack deck, but you didn't build in the right win cons. Mm-hmm. So now you're really not having a good time. Right. And the rest of the table is not pleased either. Yeah, I mean, Orvar is actually a really interesting example because Orvar is a deck that I loved 
initially Mm -hmm. i started building the list for for game nights actually for the game nights called heim and i was like oh god i cannot figure this deck out in time to be able to Uh, play it well on game nights so i scrapped it but i did build it for my personal collection and i i played it a few times and i was like "Ooh, this is really powerful and i played it again and it was like this is like too powerful like there's no way (laughs) for me to take this deck and make it a casual fun deck right. it's just the deck want the card wants to combo so badly yeah yeah that yeah. it's very hard to rein it in so now it's a cdh deck but i don't play cdh very often so i barely ever play it yeah and i guess other people too once a card becomes known for something remove it on site yeah and then all of a sudden the brand new deck you built well sorry it's kind of one of those commanders that if it sticks around everyone starts having a bad time yeah so i think yeah like understanding what you're building into as well um and the fair fight thing is i think is really important everyone i mean like if anyone watched this year's super bowl for example Mm -hmm. incredible game because it was so back and forth it was determined at the very last moment by a, a crucial play um, there were some controversial moments, but it was only controversial because it was so close. Right. Um, if the game was a blowout, like sometimes you'll see college games where it's like 92 to 5. <laughs> you just turn it off. <laughs> yeah, you turn it off. And sure, maybe it's the best time ever for the winning team that one time. Mm. But I can almost assure you, that's not the kind of thing you want to have happen over and over again. Because <laughs> right. it, it just feels bad sometimes. Even for the other team, there's like concession rules of like hey we're beating you too hard we're gonna just stop playing now yeah, actually we're just you're <laughs> you're we're good. never gonna play this game <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah having a balanced fight is important so there's a lot of factors about why a deck you built uh, doesn't work and you don't like it in fact we recorded an entire episode yeah uh 426 decks we built dot 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 but hated so you should check yep. that out if you want to find out more anecdotes, stories, and fables, I guess a fable, uh, about why a deck wasn't fun for someone. Yeah. All right. So that's like, those are the ways that it can go wrong, right? Where you can fi- find out that your deck isn't for you. But what are the steps you can take before a deck is in your hands or maybe after you've built it and you want to pivot it into something you like more? And we've got a list of them. A whole bunch of them. We're going to talk through them. Yeah. First up, this one's fun. We just kind of talked about it, but watch the deck. If you know it's a brand new commander and people are brewing around it, mm. maybe there are deck techs available that show how some combos work or how a goofy th- interaction works. Um, there's at this point so much YouTube content that and Twitch content that you should be able to find what you're looking for either in an upcoming video or one that's already been released. Yeah, there's a ton, a ton of gameplay now because there's so many streams where like the people are streaming Commander Alive and yeah. they'll take VODs and post them right onto YouTube. So a lot of the time, if you're like, all right, I want to see how this new Glissa plays out, uh, you can search Glissa Sunslayer like gameplay mm. and you can find a deck with it and be like, okay, this is what it looks like. Is that the kind of game I want to have? Is right. that the kind of deck I actually like? Yeah, and if, you, if you're like, you know what, that deck list doesn't actually match what I want to do with it go online and search up deck lists. Mm. I think that's one of my favorite things to do when I see a new commander is I have not been able to put in the brain power to think of all the six different ways you might build it. Mm. But maybe six different people out there have come up with those or versions that mix them together. So I'm never afraid to go out, check out, see what other people's lists are. And it's really easy once you get a, you know, especially for veteran players, you can just scroll through the cards, Mm -hmm. get a flavor of what it's like. A lot of websites will tell you this is like a 10 out of 10 competitive build or whatever. And I think that's a really good way to gauge too. Like, oh, is this the kind of deck I want to play? Like, oh, I I didn't realize Talrun was all counter spells. Maybe I don't, (laughs) maybe maybe my weird 2-2 Drake flying deck shouldn't be a tall ran deck mm-hmm. so that i think helps out quite a bit yeah go to edhrec.com uh, and look at the commander and the common cards that are played in it or go to moxfield and just yeah. look for look for Talrand decks and see what comes up and that way like it'll give you some helpful hints on like how to build the deck but it'll also show you what the average deck looks like yeah. and what your opponents will be expecting when you play it against them like i think if a new player looks at Talrand, they may not necessarily see the like oh the mono, mono blue spell. permission yeah, yeah. thing from it they're like oh i just played all my draw spells and i make a ton of drakes and then they sit down at their table they'll be very confused <laughs> when why <laughs> everyone is attacking them and, and counter spelling like, them and stopping brutally them. <laughs> attacking they're like that's a drake deck <laughs> and it's because of the perception of Talrand is different than that player may have thought it was yeah and that's probably something you can negotiate and talk to your play group about but we're also trying to be more broad and vague here because you may bring it to a magic con or just mm-hmm. be at an event or an lgs and you don't want to get caught off guard by the perception of a card mm-hmm. uh, because you just didn't take a couple seconds to even look it up yeah yeah um okay 
yeah pretty, pretty chill pretty chill uh i yeah. like watching it in action there's also tons of game nights episodes i was gonna so say so much inspiration from game nights and every time we have a different episode we have different mm-hmm. players different yeah. styles or extra turns yeah oh there's actually like, that's a great point yeah. extra turns is a great source too yeah checking online is going to be one of your best resources for figuring out what a deck actually looks like yeah. but if you're not sure if you're like i think this deck's cool i've watched a video and it looks cool there too and you're not, sh- but you're not sure if it's going to match up it with your play group. Well, talk to them. Like if you have a group of buddies that you play with regularly, you can be like, Hey, I'm thinking about building this deck. Is this a deck that you're cool playing against? Is this a deck that you think your decks will match up against? Well, yeah, it's also like just a great way to talk about cards. Yeah. Maybe a player will be like, Oh, you're going to do that. Actually, I want to do this. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you have this like cool brew off, which I find is a great way to reinvigorate a play group is everyone yeah. sees a new card from a new set. And they're like, Hey, let's all just build one see what happens. Um, For sure. But it's also great because if you're playing a group hug deck or a stacks deck or a combo deck, that's a really good way to find out. Uh, you know what stacks? Let's not play grand arbiter Augustine. I get what you're going for, but it, we only have two hours every night to play, so right. let's not do that. <laughs> I think bringing it up before you've built the deck really like tries to stop some of those feel bads, right? Where yeah. you're like, you show up to game night and you're and you're so excited and you've got this Grand Arbiter deck and you're like, I put it all together Who is and I'm <laughs> excited to play it tonight. And then your friends are like, I don't want to play against that. Yeah, or like, they start and then very about 20 minutes in, everyone's like, oh, past like, turn, cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody's in this horrible mood and you absolutely could have saved yourself like, what? a couple hundred dollars and also your many evening, hours yeah <laughs> if uh if you had sent a text to your play group to be like hey i'm thinking about this is that something we're into yeah i've also found myself like i'll build a deck and it's just a little too powerful for my play group and i don't play it as often as i like as i want to where it's mm-hmm. a deck i like like i have a i have a quirk tana deck where it's gruel storm and it like you pump up tana with with quirk and you make a ton of guys and it's fairly fast and it's also like a it's like a fast glass cannon yeah. deck so it sort of does powerful things fairly quickly but is also incredibly easy to interrupt yeah <laughs> and i it's very hard to find a table for that kind of deck right because you're like it's too it's too bad for the good tables and it's too, <laughs> too good, good for, for the, the bad, bad tables. tables. And we're saying bad, not in a negative bad way. Bad meaning l- low power. You're yeah, controlling power. your your speed. You want to go yeah. fewer like longer turns. Yeah, no longer games. That's a really good point. Every actually at every Magic Con, I try and bring a selection of decks. My play with anyone deck is like my Obun Landfall deck. Mm-hmm. That's like right in the middle. It's trying to kill you with a six six mm-hmm. most of the times. And then at the top end is like a Paco and Haldan deck that's trying mm-hmm. to make sure that if I'm playing in a very competitive pod, I can disrupt things and use their cards and try and kill someone quickly. Mm-hmm. But there's a whole range in between. And we're not saying don't build the deck, but just check in with your play group and know, hey, if I'm only going to have the budget slash time to build two decks, maybe I want to do ones that I can have a lot of use out of. And as to the title of the episode, a deck I love to play. Yeah, but you actually feels good because it doesn't feel good to have play, bring a deck to the table that's too powerful or not yeah. powerful enough yeah and and i find that you know for newer players that want to just get that feeling out of the way of the mm-hmm. Haha, i came in and i stomped everyone yeah that does fade <laughs> pretty quickly pretty quickly because you're still playing with a group of four and it's about the group dynamic most times not so much the who can stomp who first yeah the other, we're talking about this one way where it's like you want to build a powerful deck and you're not sure if your friends can handle it. The other, there is another version of this where your friends often build very high power decks and mm-hmm. you're like, I want to build a budget deck. Is like, do you guys want to build budget decks? Right. And just making sure that that there's a place for the thing you're building is, uh, you know, because you're not going to build like a popper deck without having a popper play group. It's exactly sort of the same thing. Yeah. Good point. Good point. All right, something else you can do instead of checking in with your play group is checking in with yourself in more ways than one. How are you doing? How am I doing? How are you doing? Good, Jimmy. How are you? Well, I was checking in on you. I should have been checking in yeah, on myself. Yeah, your, checking on yourself, Jimmy. Yeah, so what do I like to do at commander tables? I like doing explosive things, mm. but I don't like going infinite. Mm-hmm. But I also don't want to end the game so quickly that no one can play. Hmm, okay, so that, that makes sense. So these are the kinds of plays that make the most sense for fun is like right. insurrection, you know, or a uh, terror of the peaks mm-hmm. types cards. So cool. Now I know what I want. I can now continue to build down that line until I've satisfied that urge, right? And maybe right. in the future, I don't need to do it as much. But now I know I really like haste. So I'm going to put more haste in my decks because it makes me feel good. Yeah, I think this is a really important thing that 
people don't do as much where it's like <laughs> people are like i want to build all the different types of colors i want to build a white blue deck and a green black deck oh, right. and a red like and i want to have them all and, <laughs> and it's I like take a picture and put it on twitter and, and they're all going to be color-coded deck cases yeah I, I feel like we're like magic players are collectors we want it we're, we're, we're completionists we want to build mm-hmm. all the decks but a lot of the time you you just end up building a deck that you don't want to play because <laughs> <laughs> you're you like, like i'm a gruel player this is an azorius deck i right. can't figure like i don't enjoy playing it because what i like about commander is playing gruel cards and i think that's like making sure that you're building a deck that actually does the things you like to do in yeah. commander is harder than it sounds do you, like i'm sure there are players out there that don't know what makes them feel good at a, at a table yeah you know? probably because they they play a lot or they don't play enough i mean it could be any kind of player right i feel like this is a question i barely started asking myself until i did game nights and then i went oh i'm always just doing that kind of thing yeah must make me happy (laughs) that must be something i like doing and i keep doing it now yeah i mean like like my play style tends to be i like gotcha cards i like haha i had the answer Woo! like i I think those are very fun i also like very like recursive decks that are hard to interrupt and like keep pushing forward yep and like because of that i have trouble building uh like is it is not something i'm very good at because it's Mm. it's like it's all go 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 it has some cool gotcha cards, but it it's very easy to break apart. Yeah, so I feel that it, recognizing that about myself and making sure that it's like when I'm if I build an is it deck, I want a deck that still does the kind of things that I like about Magic. Yeah, you'll put a mono, mono, monomic, n- mnemonic, mnemonic, mnemonic wall in there and sure. get some spells back. Get that yeah. recursion you're going for. Exactly. Like I, I got to play an is a deck like a white deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's not something you thought you would heard in here in Commander. Josh and I both built Mizzix decks and we mm-hmm. both disassembled them because they were. It was a deck that we hated to play and it yeah. wasn't a deck that we loved to play because we just kind of like funneled into what does Blue Red want to do as mm-hmm. opposed to what do i want to do with blue red with blue yeah. red yeah or with just specifically this commander which is reduced spells and so like our brains are like well we just got to go to the point where it's powerful and then mm-hmm. you find yourself pigeonholing yourself into what the cards are dictating but you can right. always change the commander there are so many different choices now you can add in a new color so i think if you find yourself going in a direction just because that's what the deck wants to do that is a moment to stop and reflect and go what do i want to do yeah. And am I only doing what the deck wants to do because, you know, I'm a spike and I naturally gravitate towards this inevitable conclusion. Yeah, you build the deck. The deck doesn't have to build you. Wow. This is like a life advice podcast now. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> this is this is just the personal zone now. The personal zone? <laughs> Get out of my personal zone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this next point is pretty important. Um, and you can do this without paying a single cent, which oh is my, my favorite part about this. It's the cheapest part of the, the deck building process. Testing. Yeah, test it. Just practice (laughs) with your deck before you actually buy the cards. There's a lot of great tools to do this. Um, I personally like to use Moxfield the best because I like, I like their, their play tester. Mm -hmm. You can put a full, you can copy and paste somebody else's list into Moxfield and test that deck. Be like, do I like how this deck plays? Nah, not really. Do I like this version of the deck? I can play that. Or you can just throw in a pile of cards that you like and see how those cards start to work together. Yeah, or even test like, you know what? I'm going to see what happens if I put in 32 lands. Yeah. And then start drawing sevens over and over again. I think one thing... See how many mulligans you have to do. Yeah. yeah, Back in the early days of Commander, we would build a deck and you would take it to play with friends and you wouldn't really actually know what was wrong with it or why it wasn't functioning Mm -hmm. until you get in like three to four gameplay night sessions. Right. But now with Moxfield, we use tapped out a bunch. You can just hit draw seven a bunch. You can play out the first few turns and you can goldfish the deck to the point where you go, oh, you know what? I think I'm actually over indexed on Mana Rocks. Yeah. Maybe I should do this instead and see how it works. And instead of having to wait for three friends to gather around, you mulligan and you don't know if it's a good keep or not. You can just do it in ad infinitum by mm-hmm. yourself. And that is so very valuable because the only way you're going to understand how the deck plays is just repetition. Yeah. And it's a lot of the time you'll... Like if I'm if I want to try a new card, especially if that new card is expensive, I will play test with it with a list online to see if it fits into the deck before I spend, you mm-hmm. know, twenty, thirty dollars on a card like this. Where you're like, does it actually give me twenty dot to thirty dollars worth of value? Is mm-hmm. this actually a good place for it? Because it's just 
Magic is expensive. If and if you find out after two or three plays that you're like this deck is not, yeah, it's not my style. Yeah, you've already spent two hundred dollars on it. What are you gonna? You just take it apart and build a new one, I guess. Yep. Yeah. A good anecdote for this is I have a polymorph deck mm. and. It's also a deck that wants to give its commander haste. So I do have anger in there. Yeah. And there have been now multiple times, because I didn't test it enough, where I'm playing the deck, I go, all right, cool, polymorph this token. I'm going to get out Jin Cataxius. But here comes anger. <laughs> Not just once, but like three to four times, which yeah. made me go, you know what? If I had play tested this deck and understood what was happening, I knew I could either build a different way mm -hmm. or just take anger out, right? Or like figure out something. But it took me having to make the same mistake multiple times and maybe even ruin that game I was playing in before I finally got got the lesson right so playtesting really important something that i've been trying to do lately is when i build a personal deck i start with a commander usually a new one and i'll just build a 99 out of what's around the house right in like your binder just, just with cards stuff. i have yeah. and i'll put them all together and then i'll take it to, and play it against my friends a few times and be like okay what are the cards i really like in this deck mm. like is this what the deck actually wants to do do i even care about this commander before i you know put a whole list into card kingdom and hit and hit ship go yeah because you know i don't want to pay 150 dollars in new cards and then find out it's terrible so yeah. if i if i and it gives you some time to get to know the commander before or you build the 99. I like that. And it makes it makes the deck building process more of a process and less of like a one and done. It's I made it and it's perfect now. Yeah. We all know how that works. <laughs> it never works out. <laughs> it never it never the rough draft isn't the best draft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not like you're playing limited and you have a small amount of cards to choose from. I actually like that approach a lot because it also brings back the original joy of deck building, which mm. is like, "Oh, wow, this card could be really cool." Yeah. And I think when you start getting into the further advanced stages of commander, you get to the point where you go, "Well, I'll obviously never play this card." Mm -hmm. And now you've just cut off pet cards entirely from your deck building process right. and so i think a great way to reinvigorate that spirit is sort of to do what you're doing there and to know that you can play test it without needing to invest lose money time and mental energy yeah and still get the same result and maybe you go wow this actually pet card this is the best place for it to go and i wouldn't right. have known it because i was too busy optimizing otherwise right and then sometimes you yeah there's there's this little secret where you're where you're like actually i didn't think that this is the direction i want the deck to go in yeah but because i like what it what the deck feels like when these two cards are together i'm going to try and find more of those effects and yeah. i'm going to build more around that effect yeah uh, kind of like see, how Josh got to his hidden commander decks. Exactly. Like, I yeah. just want to play this effect. All right. I got a couple of tutors. I'm running more of this inside this mm. shell. And then all of a sudden it starts to work. But you can't get to that point unless you really have, it again, that clear idea of and testing it over and over again to make sure it works. Yeah, for sure. All right. We got a bunch more points to talk about. But before we do, let's take a quick old break here and hear a message from our mid -roll sponsors. Deep within the jungles of Ixalan, a primal hunger awakens. Hi everyone, I'm Galta, and let me tell you, I am one hungry, hungry dino. Now that it's warm out, I'm always on the go, which means I'm working up a bigger appetite than ever. Thankfully, I have Factor to help me power up for springtime. Factor delivers chef-crafted meals that are ready to eat in just two minutes, perfect for those ancient cravings that just can't wait. That means no more trips to the grocery store and no more picking up expensive takeout. Plus, with over 30 nutritious meals each week, including options from Keto to Protein Plus, they always have tons of delicious choices to devour, like their scrumptious herb-crusted chicken. And since each meal is dietitian approved, they're sure to keep you energized from immortal sunrise to immortal sunset. Factor really is the dino might way to fuel your dino might. <laughs> Head to factormeals.com slash command50 and use code command50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code command50 at factormeals.com slash command50 to get 50% off your first box. Ugh, so many sites, so many resumes. Hiring is a nightmare. Hmm. How does Elishnorn find such loyal workers? I mechanize their flesh and bind them to my will. Oh. No, I don't think I can do that. Then use Indeed, you sniveling fool. With Indeed, all will be in one place. 
It's the perfect platform to attract, interview, and hire new employees in a flash. Thanks to powerful tools like Instant Match, which gives you a short list of qualified candidates the moment you sponsor a post. Oh, my favorite. Screenings and assessments. Oh, yeah. With assessments, I can add over 100 different skill tests to my job post. Then I'll know everyone I'm looking at is actually qualified. Now I can skip the boring stuff in the interview and focus on what matters. Like achieving perfection? Oh, Alice Norton, you complete me. That is the plan. Wait, what? Indeed knows that when you're doing everything for your company, you can't afford to overspend on hiring. Visit indeed.com slash command zone to start hiring now. Just go to indeed.com slash command zone. Again, indeed.com slash command zone. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hi-ho, human friends! We're the Seven Dwarfs! I'm Talky. This is Worky, Jumpy, Greedy, Shouty, Smiley, and Ted. What up? Hi-ho! We're here to talk to you about Raycons. It's the time of year to make big changes, which can be just as hard as mining through rock and stone. But take it from us, even small things can add up to a big impact in life or on the battlefield. You can start by shaking up your routine with Raycon wireless earbuds. I use mine when I mine. They're water and sweat resistant, and no big tunes have really helped me keep my energy going. Eight hours of playtime make them perfect for getting through a long day counting my rubies. It's premium audio and half the price of other brands, so you'll want to buy a pair. And a spare. And one for me. I'll take a pair. I got mine in sleek frost white. Or should I say snow white? <laughs> oh, dwarf humor. Ready to buy something small with a big impact? Go to buyraycon.com slash command today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash command to score 15% off. Again, buyraycon.com slash command. Howdy doody, everybody. <laughs> We're back with the Command Zone podcast. <laughs> I'm your host, James Wong. James now, huh? Yeah. Jimmy doesn't have a real Western twang to it, does it? Yeah, James. James. Jimmy. My name is funny because I always tell people that the first two names sound like a president, and yeah. then the last name is, oh, no, you're not a president, because it's James <laughs> Franklin Ooh. Wong. <laughs> it really does take a left It turn. takes a whole left turn, yeah. It's like, James <laughs> Franklin, oh, my gosh, this guy should be on some money. <laughs> I think I saw his face on the coin. <laughs> my middle name is Georgina, so I should be on a coin, too. Wow. Somewhere. Rochelle yeah. or Rachel? Rachel? Georgina? Weeks. That's mm. pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet, huh? Yeah, that's big, a whole it's package. It's a big one to wear. I'm glad it's not my first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're talking right. about decks. Building a deck that you love to play. Um, this is one that is very true for me, and I've watched it play out on camera enough times I should probably know better, but find the pain point. So pain points are like, why does a game become unenjoyable to you? And sometimes it's politicking. Sometimes it's just the environment that you're in. But a lot, most of the times, I would say it's probably as a result of your deck building. Mm. Um, and it could be a trend, too, that you find, uh-oh, it's here. Oh, it's there. Oh, it's in all my decks. I need to fix this. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, are you the deck that always loses to a single board wipe? Yeah, you're you're not running enough board protection. You're over committing to the board constantly, or like, you're just playing decks that it's all about. I only have one and two drops in here because I want to play, 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 play. Yeah, you just don't have enough of a top end or don't have enough reach. And this is one of those. So a lot of the points that we've made up until now are like before you buy the deck. Yeah, and I think this is a big one where you're like, you know what? I built this deck and I have it now, and it's fine. Yeah, how do I get it from fine to I love playing this deck? I enjoy deck. playing it. And and finding those those weaknesses and finding those really those frustration points in it mm -hmm. and recognizing those is going to is going to further that journey, of course. Yeah. I think a big one too is just the inability to interact mm -hmm. at all. Either at instant speed, activate abilities, what have you. You find yourself with 5 mana unused, passing the turn, gets back to you. Five mana unused, and all of a sudden you're just falling way behind in the game, and the deck no longer is able to keep up, and thus you feel bad. So I think like that's another thing that works out often in my case is like I overcommit, I do something so big and flashy, I'm ready to wait, but I'm just gonna pass turn first. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to win, sorry, and then it takes all the time to go around. There's a billion things that could happen. I yeah. can't respond, and then I go, why did that feel bad? Well. 
Maybe you put yourself there, bucko. <laughs> Something that can really frustrate me about new decks is when I haven't figured out my mana curve yet. Yeah. And I because I have a tendency to just load the deck up with four drops. <laughs> I love a four drop. I don't yep. know what the deal is. They're I, per- I, it's the perfect commander like power it's level. Great. It's right? pre- like, I love that you can go like turn two signet, turn three, four drop. That yeah. feels good. Yeah. But then, but then turn four, now you have five mana, four drop. Four drop. <laughs> turn five, now you have six mana, four, <laughs> four drop. <laughs> and then you just have all this handful of four and five drops that you're like, I can't double spell. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down <laughs> to one card to turn. And I, McGee. it's just, you really, it, it's because the curve has, I haven't paid enough attention to how the deck will actually play play out yeah and usually that's a result of not gold fishing enough mm-hmm. because you don't know what what cards are getting stuck in your hand yeah another big one too is that my mana bases will sometimes i'll just like count the pips up and be like all right sure like two more islands here one more forest there mm. and then you get into the game you realize oh all of my early turn plays are blue blue or blue something mm-hmm. and i actually need to build much more heavily towards this to actually not be stuck with one because i don't know how many games now i played where i sit there and go Oh, that's awkward. Okay, um, past turn. <laughs> it's because I have like a colorless, a black, and like a, a filter land, and it yeah. doesn't do what I'm actually trying to do. I put way too many lands in to try and make this a field of the dead deck, mm-hmm. and I ruin my own chances of playing by just making bad mana bases. Yeah, I I absolutely did this with my Kumena deck. It's blue green Merfolk. Of course, the deck is predominantly blue. Yeah, <laughs> but I just put in like add Simic mana base. <laughs> half half. And Here we go. Print. Uh, you can win to the game store, and you're like, there are. I have eight forests on the board. I don't know. What the, <laughs> you're like, how are there? I, how are this many in this in the deck? Yeah. And then you go home, and you're like, all right, I need to order five new islands, and yeah. these five forests are just gonna sit in the box because I didn't even. <laughs> (laughs) think about sometimes too you'll play too many ramp spells that look for basic lands and your deck just does not have enough or you're doing nature's lore to find a forest but turns out you actually don't have enough forest x whatever else land so you should maybe think about a different ramp spell yeah but i i think this often it comes to to like autopilot type of stuff where you're like yeah like you default to putting generous gift in as a removal spell in white decks Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then you're in gameplay and you're like well, uh, this deck doesn't have any defense. If I give them a 3-3, three, three, that will actually hurt Just me. Just start killing me, like, yeah. <laughs> you will actually start hitting me with this thing, and that is going to be a problem. Yeah. So maybe I want a, a bounce spell, or maybe I want, you know, something that doesn't give them a huge beater. Right, more flexible removal. Right. To fit what you're going against. Yeah. I like this next one a lot. This was one that you brought. Yeah, this one's good. So a lot of the time, I think, especially when I'm goldfishing or when I'm, uh, or when I finally bring it to the playgroup for the first time, I'll find cards that just hang out in my hand. There's just never a moment to play them. Like it doesn't feel right, or it feels it feels too early, or it feels mm-hmm. too late, or it feels too slow, or, too or powerful, or it's too powerful. Yeah. Where it's like I just I can't cast this again in this game. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Dockside and, extortionist, I think, has that exact effect on me many times. Where I'll draw it and go. Oh, is, am, I, am I about to turn it into that kind of game? Yeah, I can't. I can't. I don't know. This. I don't think I'm going to play this. Yeah, and it's. I, I think people are like, oh, well, I like to run some powerful cards in case in case I find myself in a, a, a pod that's too powerful. Right. But then I then it, it's like you might as well discard that card if it's stuck in your hand and you're mm-hmm. not playing it for one reason or another. So I'm a big fan of just not putting in cards that you don't actively love to cast. Yeah. Like I have I have farewell in one of my decks right now. Oh, that's a good good. And example. that card is incredible. But against some decks and in some pods, Farewell is such a nuclear option <laughs> that I'm like, I can't cast this right now. It'll, it will Put end. Put it back to the like, Stone Age. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> wreck this game and so it just sits in my hand and i it's be, i haven't put it in more decks because of that yeah and um now we're sort of foregoing like i want to win the game to like i just want a good game right so i i think putting in a card that you're like you know what i always want to cast this card i'm always excited this is always front of my hand yeah and whether that's like a card you like a lot or a card that synergizes really well or maybe it's just a cheap like an, a low cmc card mm-hmm, mm-hmm. making sure that you have cards in like all the cards in your deck you're excited to cast yeah totally at like, any moment yeah that's like a uh like a sensei's divining top for me i'm just sure. slam it to get that thing on the table and just smooth other things out mm-hmm. it's like it's sort of the soul ring effect like you don't realize how powerful soul ring is until you're like 
if I draw it, it's the first card on the battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like it's, the, <laughs> it's the only decision where, yeah. where you're like, I drew a soul ring, get it out of my hand. Yeah. Put it on the battlefield. So it's those kind of cards that make you excited. Like if it's in your hand, you get it out because yeah. it's really fun. I think it's easy too to get pigeonholed into have to play these cards because you go to your EDH Rex or your Mox Fields mm-hmm. and it says like top 90% of decks play this with this card. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I guess I got to do it too. And then you start playing it or you don't want it. It's like, oh, this is so expensive. Should I really buy it? I've never played it. I don't really like the effect, but everyone else is doing it. Mm-hmm. That's you're on the fast road to not building a deck you love by doing stuff like that. Yeah. There's like, uh, uh, this happens a lot with like infinite combos with commanders mm-hmm. where it's like March. It's like March of the machines. I think is the one that turns uh, all artifacts into creatures. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. There's like, yeah, I know. What you yeah. Mean. It goes in infinite with Eloise and like a blood artist. And I have a Eloise deck and I was like, do I just get one to have it? And then there's like an easy win con in the deck. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to win that way. I don't want right. to win in like a two card, maybe stalemate. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, th- that's that's not how I enjoy playing my Eloise deck. So I just didn't buy it. I never put it in. Yeah. And that's that's a choice that I made for my own enjoyment. Yeah. It's like those life gain decks that do the sanguine blood exquisite, no, exquisite blood sanguine bond, bond yeah. combos. Like I know a lot of people that just say like, well, I have to put it in there. And it's like, you don't actually have to. And yeah. not only that, are they, they're both high mana cards. Everyone's going to look at you mm-hmm. if you do so. Only do it if you really just want to win that way. I actually started yeah. taking like doubling season out of a lot of decks that have planeswalkers that could alt. Yeah. And just in general, because I don't like it. I don't like playing this five mana spell that makes everyone turn at me. And then I, if I don't get the full value off it, I feel bad. And mm-hmm. if I do, then I'm starting to crush. So I'm like, you know what? I can actually make do like Crater Hoof Behemoth. I just replace it in all the yeah. decks that would play it with some other version, the Pathbreaker Ibex. Yeah. Because I just want to see that work because I know Crater Hoof is going to do a thing and I don't actually want to play that card most of the time. Right. If you're like, it just feels too strong for a play, my play group. It just yeah. doesn't, it just doesn't feel great. Or in my case, it's like, this is just too easy. Yeah. Just play this and go, I win. And that to me kind of gets rid of the, the joy of right. you're like, winning I didn't, if I didn't from the fight for jaws it. of defeat. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. something that I've discovered with cards like this. Like I, I have a dragon's approach deck and um, the one that the ripple one that oh, thrumming, the, stone? thrumming stone. Yeah. Thrumming stone is a win the game button in a dragon's approach deck. Right. You can trigger it multiple times. You will just kill the table. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have one and it's, in i keep it in the sleeve of the commander where it's like uh, if i am playing a powerful game with it sure i'll put it in and i'd like it's it's still fun to do like thrumming stone is fun yeah but if i'm playing in a pod where i'm like you know what i don't it's not necessary i'm not like i'm not trying to combo off i'm not trying to combo off like i'm I'm just going to cast dragon's approaches and see if i get there then i'll just keep another card in there and you can swap it around and it's like having a little sideboard yeah totally have a sideboard to sideboard against your opponents. Decks, Don't do sideboard. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> that's, but, a really good, that's a good point though. You can take yeah. it out. You can put it back in. That's the big thing. You're not yeah. losing it forever. You're right. also just maybe doing a little bit more of that playtesting point we did, which is like, how about you try the deck without that card that you don't like to play and see what happens. Yeah. You don't have to throw it out. You could keep it. You could keep it in the deck box if you want. Yeah. Don't like, throw it out. Don't. <laughs> don't throw out crater hook behemoth don't <laughs> send it to me <laughs> <laughs> no get it out of here and cast wanna... it against the jimmy the only crater hook i want to see is the secret lair one that the kid drew the kid drew it's so <laughs> cute it's like Grr. i love it <laughs> okay yeah all right we're, we're, we're going through some good lessons here mm-hmm. this next one is just eat your veggies that's it that's the actual point there's nothing else to it just make sure you eat vegetables everybody yeah It'll make you feel good and your decks. <laughs> You'll so, play better if you eat carrots. So, yeah. So what does eating your veggies mean in the context of building a deck you love to play? <laughs> it's just make sure you have the boring cards in there. The ones that make your deck work. Well, veggies are not boring. Uh, you're, I'm sorry. A little balsamic vinegar can turn any veggie into a balsamic vinegar. Exactly. <laughs> it just tastes like... <laughs> now it's just vinegar. It's just balsamic vinegar, okay. yeah. Well, it's, it's crunchy vinegar. Great. Right. This is, yeah, but these are foundational, right? You need yeah. these to survive. They, it's your fiber. It's your yeah. protein. It's whatever it is to get you through the day. But in your deck, it's the cards that are a little more boring sometimes. Yeah, I think it's it's like... You're, you're playing your deck and you're like, I used to, like, this deck worked at one point. 
<laughs> used to play. <laughs> what and happened now, to you? <laughs> and now every time I play it, it feels like I don't have enough of this, or I don't right. have enough of this, or like it just doesn't work. Yeah, you put the way I fried used food to. In there, and that's that's <laughs> always it. Is you just always cut too many lands, and you're like, I'm gonna take this land out and slip in this cool new card. <laughs> Why think about the hard things? Just yeah. take a land out. Take a land out. Everything else yeah. is an emotional decision. Yeah. But I think it's important to check in with your deck list every so often, especially if that's how you make cuts. If you don't make it digitally, if you just make the card cut, oh yeah, yeah. Lay out your deck in front of you. <laughs> count the number of lands you have. Count the number of ramp spells. Look at your curve. Look separate at your curve. The creatures, non-creatures. Like go back to the beginning and make sure you're like you have your fundamentals right in the deck, especially if it's a deck you've had for a long time. Yeah. It's, I think it's really easy to just be like, oh, whatever, sure, that should be fine. Yeah. It's like, you just put Necropotence in your deck. You need to put some more Swamp yeah. Black, sources. Black, Black, Black yeah. is like, that. that's a huge point where it's like, I've made a bunch of changes over the years, but I haven't touched the mana base at all. Yeah, and like, yeah, this yeah. mana base used to be for a totally different deck. Let's make sure this mana base works, works for the deck it is right now. Totally. Making making sure that you're being diligent and and doing your deck right. Yeah. I also think another thing people could just experiment with is try and putting in more card draw than you think you need. Yeah. Because you're never going to get too unhappy if you card draw, card draw, card draw, and oh, whoops, I just drew more card draw, so I just draw more cards. Mm -hmm. But you are going to be unhappy if you're at that, you know, turn four, zero cards in hand, don't have any sources of card draw. So I think having more sources of card draw is a great way to prune out the ones that you're like, oh, you know what? I don't need uh, this one Mm because I'm not trying to discard as much. I just want to draw straight cards. Yeah. Um, You know what? I really don't think Mystic Remora works because it just, it's not the kind of play group I'm in. So I think having more sources to begin with is a great way to see all of your whole deck and eat your veggies Mm -hmm. and then over time cutting card draw feels way better than and replacing it with a real card instead of cutting a land or a ramp spell that you really need to make sure you're getting going i'm also a big fan of like i I would say a lot of decks especially decks that were built in the last three or like three to four years like in that longer uh term could cut two sources of ramp and add just add in two pieces of card draw. Oh yeah, yeah. Because if like if you can if you're drawing more cards, you're gonna find more ramp. And you're gonna you're hit gonna your lands. find more yeah. lands. Like the having making sure that you have enough card velocity that you're turning through your deck and you're seeing a lot of cards. Yeah. Make sure you are actually hitting all of those points like obviously card draw is fun you're like oh i draw 80 nice <laughs> nice but like drawing <laughs> just having a harmonize yeah is so nice in game just to reset and make sure you're hitting your land drops and yeah. getting your ramp out and making sure you have your utility creatures before i went to magic on philly i have powerful decks that have you know mm-hmm. your mana crypts and like tons of early fast my ramp to it i literally every single one of my decks i brought to magic on philly i took cards out until i could have 37 lands in every single one of them that's great because i was like i don't want to ever have a non-game and yeah. those are the games i absolutely hate to play and if i want to make my deck into one i love to play i need to hit my land drops as absolutely. we know so i just was like i don't care i'm gonna get rid of this cool card or I, half the time i was like cutting jessica's will doesn't matter you know? like yeah, just, just get me another land i don't even need like jessica's will obviously is not the best example because yeah. it gets you to your if land both drops. mana and drug yeah, card, yeah. I don't cut jessica's will but i was you know i was cutting just more powerful stuff just yeah. like, i don't care just give me lands make sure i can always have a good easy seven when i draw so i don't need to waste time mulliganing and just yeah. be able to play my games and that's like that's your your playing self is so different than your building self. Like when Ooh, I'm building a yeah. deck, I'm I'm so excited about getting these cards in there. And then, you know, when you're actually playing the deck, you're like, who put these cards in here? <laughs> Why is this not a draw spell? This is useless. <laughs> Another and, and, draw. and like but then building me is like, but it would be funny if I got to cast it. <laughs> And it and it, should <laughs> structure everything around yeah. casting this card. <laughs> Ooh, like you just get you follow these rabbit holes, and I think yeah. pl- your your playing self will thank your building self for doing this step and making sure yeah. that like I put I start with thirty eight lands in all my decks, mm-hmm. and that includes modal cards, modal spells. So I usually include at least two modal right. spells in any deck. Um, but then I just know I'm hitting land drops. Then I just know I'm casting spells yeah. and you don't have to sit there and not play while your friends are playing. Yeah. And your building <laughs> self is yelling at you and your playing self and your playing self. You. You're like, you should have mulliganed. I actually, while we were at Philly, oh, I was, tell me this, yeah. I was playing against a kid who, who kept a really sweet hand. And he was like, it's going to be so awesome when it happens, when I can do it. And they didn't draw a second land until turn 10. Oof. 
And and at one point they vampiric tutored for a mana crypt and instead of a land instead of a land. <laughs> And I was like, get a land. Get a get land. A land. And they were like, no, 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 I'm doing the crypt. It'll be sweet. <laughs> Watch There's me. a vandal blast. You will cry. <laughs> <laughs> and then after the game, I feel, I, I was like, just make sure that the hand you have means you get a game. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's 20% less sweet than that hand. Is like, Even if it's 80% less sweet yeah, than that hand. At least you played. <laughs> yeah, you're not hoping to literally go uh, runner, runner, runner and get land, land, land or whatever. And yeah. like the alternative is your sweet hand wins immediately. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. And then the game's over. Yeah, cool, great. You're like, all right, we lost. Tweet about it. I'll go find another game then. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That was, and, and everyone else is like, I was really hoping to play a game against Rachel. Yeah, just <laughs> find a hand. <laughs> That allows you to play a game and allows your opponents to play yeah. and you just get to have a good game. And maybe the the real takeaway is that like your lack of a game actually makes the, the rest of the game for everyone else worse. Yeah, it now turns it's this it weird into a three-player three player game. game. Yeah, and then maybe... And we have to leave you alone because yeah. you're not doing anything. It just changes the vibe of the game if you don't yeah, play. Yeah, totally. All Inside right. you are two wolves, Rachel. There is yeah. a builder, the builder and a wolf player. And the player wolf. <laughs> yeah. Make sure both wolves are satisfied. And one of them eats lambs. <laughs> and the other one loves them. Stop eating them. <laughs> Stop vampiric tutoring Stop. for that mana crypt. Just get a land. Just get a land. Get a, get a command tower right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next point. Yeah, uh, this is a big one, especially if it's a deck that you used to love. Um, if you have this deck that you're like, I love, I loved this deck. It was my pet deck. Yeah. And you don't play it anymore because it's just gone a little stale. Mm. And I think a way that you can fix that is, is turning off aut autopilot by pulling out all of the tutors. Oh, and like the cards that just are like, this is what you do in this sequence before right. this happens. Because sometimes you build a deck and it's you you play it so much that you know exactly what the deck wants. You're like, oh, I want to get a tutor so I can do this. So I'll get a tutor. And then that yeah. will find this. And then the game's over and I've won. Yeah. Or everyone goes like, oh, this again? Cool. Okay. Yep. I, okay. I know what's happening. Yep. Okay. And then you just stop playing it because your opponents are tired of it and you're tired of it. And I think most of those decks would be more fun to play long term if you cut all of the tutors in it and added draw spells. Oh, so you can spark joy once more in yeah, the, the so beauty can... of randomly drawing something off the top of your deck. And you get to like figure something out. Yeah. Like that's the fun part of Commander is like working with what you have, I think. Mm -hmm. Like I love, I love a wheel because then you see a wheel and you're like, all right, what can I do with these yeah, new yeah, cards? Yeah. It changes everything. You have to like rework out what, what's going on. Yeah. Make more decisions, do cool new game actions and be forced into situations that maybe you're like uncomfortable all of a sudden. Yeah. Oh no. I usually, I usually just go vamp tutor into this and that. And then now I don't know what to do, but yeah. wait, I can do this instead. Right. Yeah. Or these, I never thought about putting these two cards together right. or, or this, actually this card works really well in this moment because they're playing this deck mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you can, you can get to actual actively engage in playing the deck yeah rather than you know being on being on autopilot and just running through the steps that you've run through before yeah that's a good point um if you are a limited master or something you may be going autopilot but in commander i think that's yeah you probably want to stray away from that <laughs> Um, well, speaking of turning off autopilot, yeah. if you don't know what's going to happen, then maybe you have to be more reactive in the moment. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's important for the deck that you love to build, to play, to play the build, whatever, <laughs> inside your two wolves, is to uh, always have action. Lights, yeah. camera, counterspell. Um, Commander is just not fun when you tap out and then you die. Or mm -hmm. you tap out and then someone does something and you go, oh, maybe I should have held up mana for this. Uh, or wish I had a card to do anything because I'm right. always caught in this situation. So always having something to do with your mana. I think Josh is like a master at doing this and always fully using it. Like, why didn't he pay for the Ristic study? He's like, oh, I think he's exactly holding up mana for something he wants to do later mm -hmm. and he's not going to sack, right? So understanding that and having action to play on every other else's turn or just in response to stuff makes you have more fun in general, I think. Because you're never out yeah. of it. Yeah, and it means you always have choices. Yeah. Where it's like, I could either do this or I could do this. I, I really like to run cards with activated abilities mm. because you they, they act like cards that you know counter spells or something like that but you're like i can hold up a counter spell but if i don't do that well i can draw with my war room right or something like that where yeah. it's uh there's a lot of like artifacts that you can you can tap. creatures so many things yeah pay yeah. two mana and tap this to make a one one 
And you're like, a 1-1 isn't particularly powerful, but it's better than not having something to do with that mana. It's better than like holding up this spell and then not needing it. And now you haven't, now you haven't used it. Yeah. So I really like where it's like, okay, I've got, I'm going to hold up this, but if, if not, I've got, I've, I can scry too. Yeah, yeah. And also, like, if you just don't do anything, then you're also giving away a lot of information about your play and your yeah. state in your hand. And that can sometimes lead to non-games, too. Yeah. There's also just so many new... I feel like Wizards, the way that they make cards more complex is adding activated abilities. Mm. Um, but there are so many great, like, lands, like Castle Lockthwaim. Yeah. You know, and it's just mm-hmm. other things that allow you to... There's one that lets you scry to, and there's the 1-1 one, one maker. But, like, yeah. stuff like that is happening all the time. If you're paying attention and know, like, hey, I'm playing a two-color deck... I could definitely afford this $1 land or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's going to make me have just those moments where I can go, oh, you know what? Pass turn to various protection and castle Ardenvale up at the same time. Yeah. I could either make a 1-1 or save myself. Save my goose. Yeah. I am making sure that you're, there's always a moment where you're making choices. Cause that's the fun part of commander. It's yeah. like, if you're, if you're like, I've done my thing and I could go to the bathroom and I'm F6. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, w- I would rather be engaged in every part of the game. Yeah. Or at least consciously make the choice. You know what? I yeah. do always have actions, but in this particular case, shields down, I got to go do this. And yeah. Take, go or to it's the bathroom. worth it for me to tap. Yeah, yeah, because exactly. Because if I untap with this, something sweet's going to happen. Yeah. Like knowing, having that control of the situation for sure. Yeah. Okay. The, this last one's kind of a kind of a weird one, but it's a big step that I've been taking lately in my deck building. It's making cuts to preserve my mental bandwidth when Ooh. I'm playing the game. Okay. So what does that mean? So there's so many cards in magic now that are like, whenever this happens, this happens. And then whenever this only this, when this happens. happens. Yeah. And this one, this one only happens on the second time I do it, but something (laughs) different happens on the third time I do it. And this one says each opponent, but this one's only one. And this one's only one opponent. (laughs) And that those cards are so exhausting (laughs) to your brain when you're playing commander. Yeah. Like trying to track all the, like what this goes and this goes and this and that. And And then a turn later, like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I missed like three triggers. Can you, do you guys mind and mm-hmm. i have been just cutting a lot of triggers that don't actually impact the game in a meaningful way oh i see like Interesting. A, a big one that i cut recently i have a like a mono green devotion deck mm-hmm. and i was running sylvan anthem which okay. is green green for all green creatures get plus one plus one and and whenever a creature enters the battlefield scry one. Oh. and i cut it because it was like every time i cast anything <laughs> you were like there's a check bottom check top okay check oh yeah check uh wait did i just bottom that other card i think i oh, oh no. I need to, now i need to <laughs> land like it's just so many choices yeah that ultimately matter very little yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> and yeah. ultimately are just stressing me out <laughs> what's like day night is a great example too yeah there's two it. versions of day night now and when someone plays the new one i just go someone tell me what's happening i don't care <laughs> yeah i have cut cards that i like like what they do because they suddenly introduce day night yeah i have i have a card I have the a card in one of my decks that i have just blacked out day night <laughs> I was like, I don't care what's on the back. Yeah. This is here for the it's front. Just the <laughs> it's I'm I'm never doing it. <laughs> yeah, and then you also just it's like juggling plates or spinning plates. Right. And there's you have five of them all of a sudden, you're all spinning them, and then someone's just like, I'm gonna do this to you. You're and you're like, hold on, I'm still trying to figure out how my board works. I can't right. actually make enough I don't have enough mental bandwidth to correctly block here. Right. Because you're busy thinking about too, it's just too much. Yeah. And I think that can be really stressful when you're playing commander. When you're when you're like, oh, I don't know what's I, like sequencing this is a nightmare. Yeah. Because there's too yeah. many things and I can't make a decision and it's making your turn last longer and and then it's that's making you self conscious because you're taking up people's time mm-hmm. and then you and then you're just crying constantly. <laughs> So and an there's just too many things for you to keep track of. And I think it, yeah, it makes you a worse player because yeah. it's like you, it's like when you have too many screens on, <laughs> like right. you're, you're not fully watching the show and you're not fully playing the game on your phone and you're not fully listening yeah, and to you your actually, partner. Or you get nothing. And now no, now you're doing yeah. nothing. Yeah. So I think just reducing some of the noise in the deck and just cutting three triggered abilities, especially if you're playing spell slinger or some sort of like oh, yeah. very complicated deck already goes a long way. 
Yeah, that's a really good point. It's also something I think a lot of like high powered business people do, which is, it's true, right? In your day to day, when you wake up and you have to go, what am I going to wear today? Do mm -hmm. I do these socks or those socks? Or how about these pants or those pants? You're actually cutting away energy from later on in the day because you're just making so many decisions out the gate. So a lot right. of people will, you know, literally just night before, lay out their outfit, mm -hmm. wake up, I know exactly what I'm going to wear and I don't need to add extra tension or stress or, or mm -hmm. just work to my mental bandwidth so that I can have it for the more important things later on in the day when I need to right. go to this meeting or have this interview or play this game of commander. Yeah, I think I think that's actually like people ask why like why aren't you running this? Why are you running Cathar's Crusade? Mm -hmm. like, oh, because man, I don't <laughs> want to do perfect it. Perfect example. Like it would be great. Yeah. But I don't want to. Yep. I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm considering cutting Jeskai Ascendancy from one of my decks where it's mm -hmm. like literally the best card in the deck. It's rules. But then so you have to like, I have to keep a dice for how big everything yeah. is. I have and a dice for this time. and then dice for that. Oh, right. this creature just got created as the commander. So there's okay. a different dice for that. So Ugh. this one has prowess, but it's also getting buffed by this. Oh, man. There's pro that's probably the reason I don't play my Kai card deck anymore. It's just, it can just be too much. And I think it happens a lot in Spellslinger abilities because there's so, Spellslinger decks because there's so many powerful ones. Ones, yeah and that like you've got the the one from strixhaven that's like whenever a permanent triggers uh. <laughs> from you casting an instant sorcery it triggers, it triggers twice, twice also yeah. it has prowess harmonic prodigy or something it, well harmonic prodigy is one of them and then this is this is like a veyron the commander oh, veyron, yeah dual and it's duality. really powerful yeah but what a pain in the butt. Yeah, I think that's the commander where Josh had to take, when we were playing on the game nights, Josh had to take a lunch break and it took him three hours to figure out what he wanted to do next. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> and it's just way too much stress when you're just trying to hang out with your friends. Yeah, totally. Yeah, exactly. Like sometimes I do like just, I, that's why I want to build the uh, the freaking whatever, the juggernaut deck. It's rules. Because it's just juggernauts. So I'm just trying to yeah. swing out with a juggernaut, you know. I think that's why I like monocolor decks so much, honestly. is like I'm doing mm. blue stuff. And the blue stuff all sort of goes in the same direction and yeah. it's not interrupted by like other, <laughs> yeah. like other sounds. Yeah. Sometimes too, like in a five color deck, even just knowing what to fetch mm. in what order, doing your life total every single time, that is a lot of mental load. Right. And at the end of it, if it doesn't, shuffling. yeah, shuffling. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Take a hint, right? That's our last sort of thing here. Uh, yeah. I think once that something becomes irritating or not fun, you should use that as a flag on the play to make you go, oh, what exactly is actually causing this, you know, pinpoint where the problem is. Mm -hmm. um, like, I think Aristocrats is another great example. Oh. If you have, you have a Blood Artist and a Zulaport Cutthroat out, and then you have another one that does this one, but this, it's the each this opponent, one just opponent. For tokens. This one's for non-tokens only. Think about <sighs> the number of choices you make in that game compared to another player, because right. or the number of times you have to tell everyone, uh, everyone, can you please take one and I'll gain one, or mm -hmm. you're the one handling, right? So it's just, there is a lot of times where I think you're, <laughs> you're the victim of your own, inside your two wolves, of your yeah. own deck building. And once you figure out what the pain point is, take a hint, do something against it to, to uh, mitigate that issue. Yeah, I, I think this is a huge point is just listening to your deck when you're playing it. It's like, what do I not, like I'm not having a good time right now. I'm yeah. recognizing that. What is frustrating me? Is it because I have to keep track of all these Soul Warden triggers? Is that driving me crazy? <laughs> is it because I don't, like I'm in firm control, but I don't have like a firm win con here? Is it because like my, uh, my opponents clearly aren't having a good time mm -hmm. and how can I solve that to make sure that like, I'm, I'm, I'm working towards making this deck more fun to play Yeah, and totally. fun, more fun to play against. Cause yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stressors. Yeah. Even just thinking about all the triggered abilities in my Kai card deck now is making me go, should I just rebuild it? Like how many of that, like how much better would it be if you just have an opt and one sick thing that happens when you cast the opt, you oh, know? That'd be cool, yeah. Right? And then and then it, you replace the other enchantment that does Jessica something else see, yeah. with a brainstorm. And yeah. now you get to do it again. Yeah. And you know exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. It's super fun. Even brainstorm, I'm like too many things to think about. Uh, yeah, what cards to put on top? That's do fair. I have a fetch land? <laughs> like maybe you cut everything but Jessica Ascendancy. If you're like, this is what I love. This is the, my my favorite part about it. Yeah. You just get rid of all the other stuff. I get it. Jessica Ascendancy and no non-creature spells. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. And all creatures. Now I help all have creatures. to make no decisions. Yeah. Jessica creatures. Zero Ascendancy actually happening. This is my Kai Car creature deck. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's spirit tribal, Jim. Spirit tribal, that's right. <laughs> With never triggering Kaikar. Um, all right, to the <laughs> listeners, what do you love about playing Commander? What do you love about building your decks? And how do you make sure your decks enable the result of what you love playing? And how do you build in a way that makes you love to play that deck? Basically mm-hmm. what we just talked about. Yeah. Um, if you have tips for fellow deck builders on ways to spice things up, make things not as stale, or maybe even like, a, I don't think people enough, I don't think enough people realize this, but X, Y, and Z, we love those comments. Please leave them in the comment section below the YouTube video. You can tweet at us. You can find us on our Discord to continue the discussion. Yeah. Tons of amazing people there. Uh, of course, you have to be a Patreon member to be on our Discord, but it's super worth it. Yeah, go be a patron. Go do uh, it. Also, if you're realizing that you're not running enough lands in any of your decks, or you want to pick up some lands with activated abilities, mm-hmm. go to cardkingdom.com slash command. They have great selection of all of the lands and non-land things that you <laughs> want to put into your deck just to chill it out a little bit. Yeah, make sure chill that out. you're having fun when you're playing. Card Kingdom has the selection that to make sure that you can find the cards that you love and you're looking for. Plus, all of the different versions of that card. I'm very specific about what version go in my decks. Some yeah, decks too. are bling decks. Some decks are like, this is first printing, non-foil. It's a very business deck. <laughs> uh, so I love that when you go to Card Kingdom, they have all of the options right in front of you and you can switch between foil and non-foil. So go to cardkingdom.com slash command to pick up some cards and support the show. Yeah, supporting the show for sure. You can also support your deck and make sure that it plays smoothly and without scuffing the corners because you're buying sleeves at ultrapro.com slash command. You're buying a playmate. You're buying a deck box. You're buying one of their amazing assortment of different binders. Maybe you want a Pokemon binder. Guess what? They got it. Maybe you want a binder from another thing or another thing here. And then, well, okay, ultrapro.com slash command. They have great deals all the time. They have tons of exclusive products you can't usually find somewhere else. Not every LGS orders everything Ultra Pro releases. So if you find that you're like, hey, I don't actually have this at my local game store, you can probably find it online. And if you're not finding that, you may find a great deal on something else. One thing that I saw recently that I was like, wait, this is actually really cool. They have like... Uh, just like slip and lock magnetic cases for that one card you really want to show off. So Ooh, like if you have a really fun. nice fancy card, you okay. just buy this little case, it's magnetic, you pop it off, put the card inside, and now it feels like you got one of those cool PSA graded cards right. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, without waiting. <laughs> but there's so many different accessories for cards and card games that I didn't know about, and I only found out about them because of ultrapro.com slash command and their amazing newsletter. So check that out. You can also support our show by doing so or just buying Ultra Pro products because they are a sponsor. Yeah. All, All right. right. Well, let's move to an end step. Do you? Is there? What have you been doing outside of the world of magic lately, Jimmy? There's a world outside of magic. I know. I, I've been deeply entrenched in the magic world lately. Yeah, I will yeah, say that. Uh, yeah. After coming up from magic on Philly and stuff yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, I've been watching a lot of shows. We yeah. were talking about The Last of Us, right? Oh, it's so good. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, Pedro Pascal and Bella Hadid. <laughs> Not I'm, Bella that's, Hadid. It's not Bella Hadid. It is Sorry. the girl that played the young Mormont uh, yep. uh, lady from Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's incredible. Um, so both of them play uh, the two main characters in mm-hmm. The Last of Us, which is a video game adaptation into a full-blown HBO series. Yeah. With the original uh, director, Neil Druckmann, is on, as well as Craig Mazin, I think is his name. He did an amazing show called Chernobyl. And oh my god chernobyl's heartbreaking and yeah. also good yeah and so is the last of us they yes. are about almost all the way through the season now i think i know it's making me so sad um, i think they're probably playing on a few more but this is one of if not the best video game adaptation and just straight up show i've seen in a very long time um i'm a massive pedro pascal fan yeah he's so fun He is just knockout in the role and he really nails it and the show is just so well built there's never an episode where you're like that was weird and filler every episode mm-hmm. has a purpose it is shot beautifully and it has everything that if you're a game lover from the original game you will enjoy it and even if you've never seen it i'm watching it with my wife right now yeah, she's like oh that's so good it's what i really love about it is is i i have i've watched my boyfriend play the second one. Oh wow pretty good spoilers no idea what happens in the first one <laughs> no idea just know who isn't in the second one yeah 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 um but it's I think there's a lot of surprises in the show for even him who has played through the whole show totally. because they really zeroed in on certain aspects and they changed certain things to make the narrative stronger and mm-hmm. cleaner and it make it a better show. Yeah. There's not a lot a of video a, game. Yeah, yeah, totally. There, there's a lot of attention to making it, making it just a good product on its own. Yeah. Uh, so even if you played the games and you're like, I know the story, it'll be fine. Uh, there are a lot of surprises and that's really beautiful. 
Yeah, Last of Us is one of the few games I've played like four or five times because every time they come out with a remaster, I just want to experience the story again. I just jump back in. So that is uh, a good thing to say because the show is also very good. So check it out if you haven't already. It's on HBO Max. All right, let's move to the cleanup step and say thank you to our big team here at the Command Zone. Thank you to Craig Blanchett, Damon Lentz, Arthur Meadowcroft, Lady Danger, Manson Lung, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Jordan Pridgen, Sam Waldo, Garof Galati, Jamie Block, Mitch Trafford, (laughs) Aaron Lamberger, (laughs) Gabriel Real Pozos, Megan Yip, Eric Lem, and Josh Lequai. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you all. Uh, again, find us in the comments. Let us know about how you build a deck you love to play, and we'll see you for the next episode of the Command Zone, a podcast. Oh. And, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's never leaving. For your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>